Hey Nerdy Knitters, in this video we're going to learn how to make a mug cozy. It'll fit on your favorite coffee mug or it'll fit on your favorite travel size mug. It's a great beginner project. All it is is knitting every row and you'll also learn how to yarn over and knit two together to make some buttonholes. It's perfect if you're brand new to knitting. There's even a free pattern that you can download. Just look for the link in the video description box down below. Let's start knitting. A cup cozy is a perfect first project. It's very simple to do and it knits up really quick. You'll learn how to make this fabric. It's called garter stitch, which is very stretchy. You'll learn how to make buttonholes and attach buttons. This is a cup cozy. It'll attach to your favorite mug. And to do this project, you're going to need bulky yarn, size 10 US 10 needles, a few buttons, and a tapestry needle to weave in your ends and the pattern. You can find the pattern linked down below. You can go print your own copy. Let's start with the pattern. We'll take a look at that first. Because if you're going to knit, you have to get used to reading knitting patterns. Most patterns include the same basic things. Usually a picture of your finished project and it will list sizes. This project comes in two sizes. The one here is a small. You can see it's quite stretchy though, so it should fit around most any mug. But if you have a giant mug, you might want to knit the large size instead. And that also includes the finished measurements of the project. The one here is three inches wide by eight inches long. And a pattern also lists your materials. So I just showed you the materials. You need your tapestry needle and buttons to finish, the needle sizes to use, and the type of yarn you'll need, and usually how much yarn. And down here we have something called gauge. Now for a project this size, it's not very important, but if you're going to knit a sweater, this is information you'll need to know. This tells us how many stitches and rows in a small square, and we can use that information to decide what size to make when we knit our own gauge swatch. We're not going to worry about that today, but it's important information to know for the future. So you know that the designer had this gauge, so you'll wanna match that gauge so your finished project will be the same finished measurements. And most patterns also tell you what kind of things you'll need to know in this project. It's for beginners, so we're just doing the very basic, basic things. Next, you'll find instructions that explain how to work the pattern. It's a very simple pattern, so the instructions are very short. How to finish the project, and patterns include abbreviations. We're using some basic ones in this pattern so you can get used to reading them. The first step is casting on your stitches. Now, it's hard to knit a project if you don't have any stitches to knit. So we're going to start by casting on. I start my cast on by making a slip knot, pinch the yarn between your first two fingers, wrap it around one time, and then the next time wrap it, but bring it underneath that first wrap, just like that. Insert your needle between the two and draw that second one right through, and you have a slip knot on your needle. That counts as your first stitch. You can tighten it right up. So we have one stitch on our needle. We're going to use the knit cast on to cast on our stitches. So we take our other needle and we insert it into the hole on that first slip knot. And we take our yarn, which is hanging down here. Make sure you have the yarn and not the tail. Bring it up and around, just like that and you pull that through and then hold them parallel and slip that new stitch on the needle and you can draw it tighter. And then you repeat that for all of your stitches. You insert into that new stitch, bring the yarn up and around, draw it through Hold your stitches parallel or your, hold your needles parallel and insert your left needle into that new stitch and pull it to tighten it. So you're going to do this for all of the stitches needed for your pattern. 
draw it through. So let's see what it says. CO means cast on. If you look at your abbreviations, 10 STS, that means stitches. So cast on 10 stitches. So you'll complete this cast on. Insert, bring the yarn up to the right and around to the left. Draw it through. Put that on the needle. Repeat this process until you have 10 stitches. Okay, the stitches are cast on. So we look at our next instruction. It says knit every row until piece measures seven and a half for the small. And we have some parentheses here. This tells us our sizes. If you remember up here, we have two sizes, small and large. So most for most cups and even large mugs, a small is perfectly fine. So our small, we'll just knit every row till it's seven and a half inches. So to knit, it's just like the cast on. It starts just the same. Take your right needle into that first stitch on the left needle, right underneath, just like that. Take your yarn. It's down here. You're bringing it up and around, and you're going to draw it through that loop. But now, instead of putting this new stitch on our left needle, we don't need to do that. We've already done our cast on. We're going to drop this stitch right off the left needle because we've knit into it and created a new stitch. So we repeat that process with the next stitch on the needle. Insert. Bring our yarn up and around. It's important to go in this direction. You're bringing it up from the bottom to the right and over to the left and drawing it through, dropping that stitch off. That is a knit stitch and you're knitting. Insert, bring the yarn up and around. If it's important, think about it as moving counterclockwise. If this is our clock, we're coming around the clock that way, counterclockwise. Bring it through and take the old stitch off the left needle. So you're going to continue doing that right across the row until you've knit all 10 stitches. As you get more confident, you'll gain speed. And this will go much more quickly. There we go, we finished the row. So once we have pulled that last stitch off our left needle, now this needle is empty. So we're going to switch them around. Put that empty needle in your right hand, turn your work. So your working yarn is right here, ready to be worked on this stitch. Don't confuse it. Don't accidentally grab your tail and start knitting with that. That's a pretty common thing. We all, we have all done it. Okay. So the yarn is down here to the back. This is another thing that's pretty common is it looks, this stitch looks a bit floppy. So you might be tempted to go like that and pull it up and then knit. But what you've done, you've pulled the head of that stitch up and now you've created what looks like another stitch. And you'll end up with 11 stitches on your needle. So if you're concerned, stop and count your stitches. Make sure you still have 10. It's a small project, so it's pretty easy to count those stitches. So you'll do the same exact thing. Insert your needle into that stitch, wrap the yarn, pull it through, drop it off. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. And you're going to keep practicing your knit stitch across the row. We finished another row, so we swap hands empty needle goes in our right hand, stitches go in our left, working yarn is right here. Now before we start the next row, let's discuss holding this yarn. You can see this time I was just picking it up every time to wrap it. 
It doesn't matter if you're right or left-handed, you're always going to hold the needles in these positions, and the working yarn you can hold in either hand. I'm right-handed, but I prefer holding this yarn in my left hand. But you'll want to practice holding the yarn, just holding it like this, wrapping it around a couple of fingers, and using this finger to control what's called your tension. You want your stitches to always be the same size, so you use your needle to make the size, but you can also control how much yarn is being fed through with your fingers. So you can go like this and wrap it around like that. That's a common way to hold it. So we knit, bring our yarn up, just like that. And then we don't have to drop the yarn between every stitch, which makes it a little easier to work. Another way to hold it is to wrap it around three fingers and bring it up. There really are plenty of ways. You just wanna practice holding the yarn in different ways to find what's comfortable for you. It'll take some time, but you just keep moving the yarn around your needle and making your stitches. And perhaps on the next row, try it with your other hand. Okay, the first thing to do, move your things around, empty needle in your right, work in your left, working yarn here. Make sure you have 10 stitches. Remember, don't do this, pulling that up and over. Now it looks like we have 11 stitches, we don't want that. Take your working yarn, bring it down to the back. That stitch is floppy, that is completely normal. Don't be tempted to pull it up and over to tighten it up. That's not going to do anything for that stitch because it's actually way down here. You'd have to tighten it that way. So just ignore it. Bring your yarn down and underneath. This time I'm going to hold my yarn in my left hand like I prefer. I usually wrap it around my finger and I use this finger to control it. A lot of people use their first finger. It really, it doesn't matter. You, you just have to get comfortable with a certain method. And if you're still comfortable, just leaving it down and picking it up every single time, like this, that is perfectly fine too. But it just, it's easier if you keep the yarn in your hand all the time. So I'm gonna switch to my left hand and you can see how that looks. It's still coming from the same direction. Insert, the yarn is still down here. I still have to bring it up and around to knit those stitches. Insert, bring the yarn up and over. Just like that, across the row. We turn our work and make sure we still have 10 stitches and we didn't drop anything anywhere or accidentally make an extra stitch. That's the best time to check so you can fix mistakes right away. Now that you know how to do the knit stitch, continue working until you have seven and a half inches from the cast on edge. I'm gonna show you how to measure that after I get some knitting done on here. Be sure to get your copy of the pattern by clicking the link down below and click like and subscribe if you want to be notified when more videos are released. So get knitting and we'll come back and measure our work in a little bit. Okay, once you've knit for a while, you want to stop and measure your work. I don't usually measure when it's on the needles like this. I like to use my row gauge instead, but for a beginner simple project like this, it's perfectly fine. Take your tape measure or your ruler and you're going to start with the stitch just below the one on the needle. No, don't include your needle. Go right underneath and all the way down. Oh, seven and a half. Yep, I've definitely reached that just a bit over, which is fine for this. So we're at seven and a half. Once you get to that mark, it's time to stop and do your buttonhole. So we finished this instruction. Now we're right here, the buttonhole row. And this is what often causes new knitters to freak out just a little. You see all these letters and numbers and you're wondering what in the world does that even mean? 
that's where your abbreviations come in because all of those short little things are all right here. So let's just work right through it. You're just going to follow each instruction right across the row. That K means knit and the two tells us how many things to knit. We're knitting two stitches. So we'll do that first. Empty needle in the right, working yarn and project in the left. So our first instruction said to knit two stitches. So we will do that. The next thing it says is K2TOG. And well, the, the knit two looks familiar. TOG means together. Knit two together is a decrease. You're taking two stitches and turning them into one. And it's exactly what it says. Instead of knitting one stitch like that, we're going to knit two of them together. So there's our first stitch. There's our second stitch. We insert into this stitch and the first one. It might take a little bit of wiggling, but you want to make sure your needle goes through both of those stitches, just like that. Both of them. Wrap your yarn just like you're going to knit. Bring it through both stitches. You've taken those two right there. You're going to drop them off. You've turned them into one stitch. So now you'll have three stitches on this needle and you'll have six stitches over here. So right now we only have nine stitches. We've removed a stitch or decreased a stitch is the common term in knitting. Our next instruction after that comma is a Y-O and that means yarn over. This is an increased stitch. It creates a hole and that's what we're gonna use for our button. Our yarn is back here while we knit, but to create a yarn over, we're going to bring it to the front of that needle and up and over, just like that. That creates a new stitch once you work your next stitch. Let's look at that again. I finished our knit two together. My yarn is back here. I'm going to bring it to the front of this needle and up and over that right needle, just like that. And I'm gonna hold it there. And our next instruction is a K1. That means knit one stitch. Keep an eye on that yarn over, hold your finger on it so you don't lose it. You insert and you knit one stitch and that keeps that yarn over in place. And now we've increased a stitch, this yarn over right here, added another stitch. So you should be back to 10 stitches, five on this needle, five on this needle. So now we're going to do that again we knit one, now we're going to knit two together again. There's our first stitch, there's our second. We're going to decrease, insert into both of those, wrap your yarn, pull it through, drop both of those stitches off. Those two stitches have become one stitch. So now we've lost another stitch. We're down to nine stitches now. Six on here, three over here but we're gonna bring that stitch back with a yarn over. So our yarn's in the back, we bring it underneath and up and over. Let me show you that with my right hand this time in case you hold your yarn here. Same movement, you're bringing it underneath, up and over and holding it there. If you have to, plant your finger on top so that yarn over doesn't accidentally disappear. And then our yarn over and then it was knit three. We have three stitches left so we're going to knit all of them, holding that yarn over there. Now we are back to our 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we've created two very simple buttonholes with those yarn overs. You can see if you pull it right there, you can see there's a hole and there's a hole right underneath where those yarn overs are. And that's where our buttons will go through. So we turn our work. Our next instruction is knit one more row, then BO stands for bind off. Knit one more row. So let's work this final row. Knitting across. And when you come to a yarn over, right there, you can see that big hole. You're going to treat it just like a knit stitch. Insert right into the middle of it. Wrap your yarn to knit pull it through 
and that creates that nice big hole for our button. Knit across the row. And there's another yarn over. Insert right into the middle of that hole. Wrap our yarn, pull it through. And there's our two buttonholes for our buttons. And our last instruction was to bind off. We can't just pull our needle out. All of our work would unravel. So we need to lock these stitches in place. Turn our work again. Binding off is very simple. Work the first two stitches just like you normally would. Stop right there though. We're going to take this first stitch and pull it up and over this stitch and that will be bound off. We insert our needle into that first stitch, pull it up and over, just like that, leaving that stitch on the needle and we've bound off a stitch. We do that again, we knit one stitch. Now we have two stitches right there. We take that first stitch and pull it up and over that second one, holding that on there if we have to with our finger. And you do that for every stitch across the row. Pull it up and over that stitch and bind it off. There, so bind off your mug cozy, all of those stitches, and then we'll see what we have to do next. Okay, I'm right at the end here, binding off that one, and I've got one stitch left on my needle. I've cut my yarn. All I need to do is pull that up and out, and I've bound off all the stitches. There, and there's our mug cozy. So our last instruction is to attach our buttonholes and weave in our ends. So look at your, your mug cozy and look at, decide which side you want to be the outside. I think I'll pick this side. So. I will attach the buttons opposite the buttonholes. See, my buttonholes are here. I attach the buttons here so when it gets wrapped around, it'll be closed just like that. We're going to need our buttons and our tapestry needle and scissors. And I just use the same yarn for these. Okay, so thread your needle for your first buttonhole. Okay. So our buttonholes have about three stitches on either side. So go to the other end. Buttonholes are here. We go to the opposite end and look for these ridges. Each of these ridges is two rows and we're going to work our button. We're going to attach our buttons in between those ridges. So we'll go right to the edge. We don't want to be right on the cast on edge. That's really kind of loose. So we're gonna look at these two ridges and attach our buttons in between. So just count right here, these little stitch heads. There's one, there's two, there's three. So I wanna attach my button right here and that'll put it about opposite of that buttonhole. So I'll come from behind, catching some of that yarn because I wanna Make sure it's very secure. Work right through some of that yarn. Don't pull it all the way through. Slide your button on there. In through one hole and we're going to go back out through another hole and down in about the same spot, catching the other side of that stitch right there. So we're gonna go back up in there about the same area through that other buttonhole. Back down. And that's it. That's all I do for these. Nothing really spectacular. What I do on the back side though, I tie a knot just to secure it. And then we're gonna weave in those ends anyway. And we'll do the same with our other buttonhole. And our other button. And then last step is to weave in ends. We've got quite a few ends to weave in. I'll demonstrate a few different ways to weave in these ends. Okay, one simple way to do this is to just catch the heads of the stitches. These bumps here. 
So you'll just take your needle up through, try to get split the stitches to get the yarn worked in there. Just like that. You can see I'm just working them through, catching the yarn as we go through. And that's probably sufficient. This yarn is pretty grabby and sticky. If the yarn you're using is a little more slick, you might, might want to try the other technique I'll show. And then I'm going to go in another direction just to make sure they stay in. That's a really quick and painless way to do that. But you can see, you can still see where it's going. So you definitely want that on the wrong side of your work. Another way to weave in ends is what's called duplicate stitch. And all you're really doing is following the path of the stitches. Each stitch is just a loop and we're just going to follow that path. We can see this yarn's going this way under there. So we'll go that way. Then it's going this way. You can see the stitch goes up and around like that. You can see right there. See, there's a loop and it goes up and around just like that. So we're just going to follow that path. And this method works for every yarn. Like it really holds it all in place. We're following the path of that yarn up and around. Just like that. It works for all yarns. Maybe super slippery ones, you'll want to go quite far to weave it and make sure it's not going to come out. But going back and forth like that really hides it in there. And also, it's not as noticeable as this one right here because it follows the path of the yarn. It just looks like a little thicker spot because this is bulky yarn, so it's going to be more obvious anyway. So those are two methods for weaving in the ends. You'll want to weave in the rest of your ends. And then you can attach, I've got an empty mug here. You can see it stretches a lot, so it should fit most cups very easily. Still have to weave in the rest of my ends, but I can see that this is gonna fit just fine around this big cup. And there you go. There is your mug cozy. I have a few more project ideas I've linked down below, so be sure to go and check those out too. And please click like and subscribe if you want to get nerdy with your knitting.